most wanted, appalling behaviour. Personally, I don't ever want to see him back. That's one of the worst things you can do to a fighter. That made me so angry. Like, tears in my eyes, I couldn't believe it. I've never, ever been involved in a fight and with one, but the atmosphere felt like we lost. If this person doesn't win this fight, he has to retire. When can we get Leon Wills inside the Misfits boxing ring? <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Misfits News. I'm your host, Ben DeBain Davis, joined by my co-host, as always, it's BL. And today, we've got some thrilling updates for all of the Misfits boxing fans out there. The unveiling of the full Misfits 14 card. Oh my gosh! But before we jump into that and all the other updates, BL, how is your day going? I am super pumped. Finally finding out the Misfits 14 card. There are so many new names as well and so many great matchups that can happen from this. So I'm excited. How are you doing, Ben? How's your day been? Oh, I'm so pumped, you know. I haven't seen you in, in so many days so and it's long. nice to it's this... nice to reconnect. So today's agenda is the full reveal of Misfits 14, KSI's return, and some comments he made about the influence of boxing scene, and an exclusive interview with your PT's favorite PT, Leon Wills. The reveal of Misfits 14, it stirred up some anticipation, some fan favorites are returning, and some new people have an opportunity to shake up the scene. BL, I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on this card? This card is really interesting. I mean, it's a real shake-up, and it's going back to the basics of what influencer boxing currently was. You know, I do enjoy yeah. those 2v1s, the survivor tags, the tag teams. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy those, but I do like some good old matchups, and I think there's going to be some really exciting KOs. So, Ben, run us through the full fight card, and let's break them down for everyone. Obviously, huge fan favorite saw Poppy returns against Amadeus Ferrari, who is a mixed martial arts based fighter. He's got a record of six and five. You know, they'll look at the record and go, oh, this guy's a pushover. This guy's not a problem. But we've seen other mixed martial artists transfer into the scene and get belts like Anthony Taylor. So this isn't an easy fight for saw Poppy, in my opinion, Bill. Absolutely not. You know, when you look at someone with experience that has lost as well and has come back from it, they are dangerous fighters and they're going to want to come in here and set a statement. Either they're dangerous or they're cooked. <laughs> that becomes the question, right? Can he rally? No, seriously. There's some fighters that take a, a, a brutal beatdown like Saul Poppy did, and they're changed, right? Pressure makes diamonds. We'll see who shines brighter. But King Kenny fighting Adam Brooks. This is a really interesting one. Brooks is a little bit older, but man, has he shown grit, determination. He's fighting for so much more than himself. And King Kenny, similar to Saul Poppy, needs to win. You know, as much as you want to say King Kenny has some more experience, he's a better boxer. Adam Brooks has gone in there and knocked two people out. Not one. Both times he's done it twice. He's got power. He's a scrapper. So I'm real excited about that fight. And Ben, let me set you the story. King Kenny versus Salt Pappy, the fight everyone wants to see. If both fighters win their fight, surely we see a face off after. Another bout that's maybe going a little bit under the radar is a heavyweight title fight between Tempo Arts and a guy that fought on one of HS Tiki Taki streams, Ben Knights, I believe. Ben Knights, yeah. I mean, again, two heavyweights, two big clashes. This could end up in being a real highlight, real KO for either of them. We haven't seen much of Ben Knights. Obviously, this is his Misfits debut. However, we know Tempo Arts. He has those hands. He's come in on the highest level against some of the most difficult opposition again. And he's performed each time. So who's going to get the belt? It's a real toss-up in that one. Yes, at that weight class, one punch can change everything. But Tempo Arts is 3-0, and taking out Chase Demore via the scorecards. And the thing I want to highlight is he is getting fitter as each fight goes on. 291 in his debut, 282 in his second fight, and 274 against Chase Demore. Now, I Obviously, 274 pounds isn't exactly where you want to be, but I have full faith that he'll get into like the 250 range for this fight. I mean, listen, Tempo's got skill. You add a lot more athleticism and fitness to him against a guy who has never made that walk at the Misfits level. Full respect to Ben Knights, but this is a different ball game, and Tempo Arts is the pitcher. Another fight that has me on the edge of my seat, Julie Pocker versus Barbie. I mean, what a scrap we have here, Ben. Oh, that's a fantastic one. Julie is such a talented fighter. I was thoroughly blown away by her skill that she displayed against El Brook, I believe. Barbie is a walking brick wall. I think that she's going to eat every single punch that Julie gives her and try and just out durability her. That hasn't worked before, but we'll see if it works this time at Misfits 14. Well, we've got a bit of a wild card here. Ryan Taylor versus Mist. Obviously, we haven't seen Ryan Taylor for a little while. He was meant to fight Swarms and it got cancelled for God knows what reasons. And we haven't seen him step into the ring and properly fight for quite some time. What do you make of this, Ben? Again, opportunity. You know, this is a big platform and uh, Taylor got a little bit of weight on the shoulders. I think there is some pressure here for him. We'll have to see. Someone can step up to the plate or someone can strike out. The more interesting one, in my opinion, out of the entire card, and people are going to disagree with me, is Argentinian King versus Tasmanian Devil. 
Now, here's why this is one of my favorite fights. It's because I love the interim lightweight tournament. I love it. Biel, you, yeah, you know that I'm a huge so fan good. of this, and getting more of these opening matchups is great, especially with these two guys who we don't know much about. I don't know. I love the interim lightweight tournament. I wish that we had Ace Musa, Waleed Sharks, and I wish we had rebooked Cray Cray and Yeti Gang on this one, but who knows? There's still some time. Maybe a couple matchups could be added. Every time we watch a fight on the tournament, I don't know who to look to fight Dean. I don't know who's going to win yeah. it. It's so exciting. I cannot wait to see how it unfolds. Last thing on Misfits 14, likely occurring inside the UK. PL kind of has me pointing towards the future. Misfits Dallas is heavily rumored after this one. That would be a great event. Obviously, we need a bounce back from what was Misfits 13 in Nashville. What do you think about that? Seems exciting. There's so many names being tossed up at the moment for that card. So I cannot wait to see how it unfolds. But right now, all that's on my mind is Misfits 14. KSI was recently on the What's Good podcast, and he has announced his comeback to crossover boxing. But this time, he's vowed to never let a fight go to the judges. Only knockouts expect from the nightmare bl what do you make of this uh incoming return what makes me excited it looks like ksi is getting ready to lace up those gloves again and this time he's not going in for the decision he's going in for some big ko's and he's calling out some big names as well so let me run you through a few of the names he's called out we've got jake paul we got mcgregor we've got floyd mayweather and obviously that tommy fury rematch now ben i ask you who would you like to see out of those names i know you want slim we all want slim but out of those names I've given you, out of the names KSI wants to fight, which one makes sense? Obviously, Jake Paul. I think that's the fight that we have been angling for for about five or six years now. It just makes the most sense. And with KSI's mentality of wanting to knock people out, I would say that Jake Paul is the most knockoutable opponent from that lineup we saw the tommy fury fight um he landed that one great punch but outside of that just seems stylistically he th there's not many openings jake paul in my opinion is the one where it would work out and i think he could land that shot that being said jake paul could also land shots of his own kids got power so i don't know that's that's the most knockoutable one in my mind. KSI said he's not happy with Most Wanted or Dean the Great. Unpack his words for me. So essentially KSI was very frustrated because he doesn't believe Most Wanted didn't walk out out of fear. He thought it was something related to Aiden Ross. Obviously, this is all speculation. This is We don't know what's the truth, but it doesn't look like Most Wanted is going to make a return to Misfits anytime soon. However, Dean the Great, as we know with Mams Taylor, is going to make a return to Misfits, but it's going to be with controversy, especially with KSI. Yeah, it's tough. You know, I think Dean really does dug a hole for himself, but he climbed out of it. I, I fully believe that him and Mams are on good terms. And, you know, it's tough when there's a huge spotlight on everything you do every single day. Dean's worn that crown as effectively as he could, but, um, you know, it's it's a lot of pressure. So I think we need to understand that everyone's a human. And for KSI to hold either a grudge or ill will against Dean, hopefully we can move past that and fully everyone be on the same side because Dean the Great, whenever he's fighting, Misfits is better for him. Unfortunately, also on the What's Good podcast, KSI also announced that Bazinga will not be fighting on Misfits, that they did make the offer that he was looking for. However, Bazinga does not want to fight. And I understand it. Not everyone is yeah. cut out to wanting to fight. He doesn't have to fight. That's what everyone has to remember. The, I, the thing is, though, in order for him to fight, he has a number. And if we can't reach it, it is what it is. The guy's got responsibilities. Really? And I understand that even if he wants to fight, even if he has that inside him, it needs to make sense, BL. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly a pleasure to welcome into the Misfits News booth the man of the hour. It's Leon Wills. Leon, how are you today? Good, sir. I'm good. I'm good. I'm well, thank you. How are you guys? Oh, pumped, man. Super happy to have you here. We wanted to start off with a question. Unfortunately, we didn't see you in the Misfits Small Castle video. Can you share your thoughts on that Misfits 13 card? Uh, it was The show was a wrap. I liked the um, Yardi versus Cray Cray fight, what we got of it. But then mm. the mishap happened. Sort of bad mind, red eye people, docs the event. And then, yeah, the event went on. Most wanted appalling behavior. Looking back now, I remember when it was the weigh-in, someone said something like, um, who's walking out first? And it was like, oh, it's a surprise, it's a surprise. <laughs> I think he already yeah. knew that he wasn't going to walk out. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> surprise he was he wasn't going to show up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let's dive a little deeper into that. Most Wanted, obviously, not making that walk. What do you make of that? Obviously, being a fighter yourself, having trained fighters, what do you make of a fighter not making that walk? That's one of the worst things you can do to a fighter because I've had someone uh, pull out of a fight I think two days before and that made me so angry, like, Anger, like, mm. towards tears in my eyes. I couldn't believe it. So imagine someone pulling out, like, maybe, like, 20 minutes before that you, you're meant to walk out. Once you're already in that, that war mental state. Personally, I don't ever want to see him back. He shouldn't come <laughs> back. Wow. I don't want don't to hear nothing about, oh, yeah, I'm going to come back on the redemption thing. No, there's no coming back. The door's yeah. closed. Is it locked as well? Is it locked? It's locked. It's, all... it's, lo it's locked. It's, it's, it's not locked. It's locked. Yeah. The door's <laughs> open. You come through the door and you're going to get rushed. 
That's what happened. <laughs> you Liam will rush you. Liam will rush you. <laughs> a friend of ours, Vidal Riley, recently fought against Lowell. What did you assess of his performance on that win? I think in terms of performance wise, it was a great performance, especially him having a fractured rib from round one. In the last minute of round one, the guy fractured his rib and he managed to adapt and overcome. If we've got the amount of punches thrown, it was always in his favour. Winning the rounds, he was doing he was doing well. Fainting, shaking, lots of movements. Yeah. But that's what you have to do when you're when you've got a fractured rib. It's even harder. It's hard to move actually with a fractured rib, but he persevered and got the job done. It's crazy when you fracture a rib, it makes things harder. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> Having been in the corner then, did you actually know that he fractured his rib in round one? Uh it got to like no, no, we didn't know. We didn't know. Um he got to like, I think it was round four or round five. He's following the game plan, but he's not executing the game plan. Like he's, he's just doing like phase one of the game plan, not going into phase two and phase three. So it was like, like, come on, like, what's going on? Like, if he didn't fracture the rib, we would have put him away within six rounds. Like, we would have got that knockout easily. We could see that he wasn't executing what we have been drilling. And then we find out later on towards the end of the fight, like he said, yo, like my rib. What was his sentiment maybe right after the fight when he came back to the corner? Was he like, yeah, that was a good one? Or, you know, man, I, I really wish nah, I could have gotten that. You no, know to be honest, it felt like, it felt like we lost. I've never, ever been involved in a fight and we've won, but the atmosphere felt like we lost. Like yeah. there was no celebration. Oh, nothing. It was <laughs> flat. It was so flat. It felt sad. I can't, I can't believe it. It's the first time me experiencing something like that. Something I want to do is shift back to Misfits for a second and talk about your impressions on that Misfits 14 card. Of course. Uh, there's some tasty fights on there. There's some good fights. There's some... There's a fight on there where I think if this person doesn't win this fight, he has to retire. He has to call Ooh. it a name. Personally, if Kenny doesn't beat Adam, Kenny needs to retire. No disrespect to Adam. No disrespect to Adam. Kenny is an experienced fighter in a crossover scene and he can't afford another loss. What do you think about the interim lightweight tournament? Obviously, Argentinian King and Tasmanian Devil currently slated for that Misfits 14 uh, event. I kind of wish we rebooked Cray Cray and Yeti for 14 as well. Yeah, I, I would have liked, I would, I would have, yeah, I would have liked that. Craig and yeah. um, Yadi again. That that needs to happen ASAP. I wonder <laughs> if we're going to see a, a, a better Yadi now. Now he sort of has a bit of information and data. So is he going to come out a bit sharper? He's going to be more on it. What would so, be yeah. like from a coaching perspective? Because like if you're in Yadi or Craig Cray's corner, yeah, you go, man, we had two live rounds with a guy. That's almost frustrating though as a coach, mm. right? No, it's even better. It's even, it's, it's even better. Yeah. Because you've got live data and it's new <laughs> data. It's new data. So you can see all of um, Craig Cray's habits and bad good habits and bad habits what combinations he likes to start with what's his favorite punch what way does he like to move there's so much data you can gather from them two rounds when they fight again we're going in from round three mm. it's not a brand new fight it's straight gonna pick up where it left off i believe i'm excited for the fight but leon when i said misfits 14 i saw you licking your lips now i want you yeah. to tell me which fight do you think is going to be fight of the night which one's going to get you excited at the corner Ooh. uh maybe uh julie julie versus barbie Oh, yeah. that's going to be a scrap. That's a tough one. That's a big one. <laughs> They're going to go at it. They're going to go at it. You've got Miss against Ryan Taylor. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure. I, uh, I see Miss doing that little play with Modine before, but I ain't seen nothing of him. <laughs> that heavyweight bout between Tempo Arts and Ben Knights. I love belts on the line, Leon, and Tempo seeks to defend it. Do you think he gets it done at Miss for 14? Um, I think he can get it done, you know. It, I think mm. he needs to work on his fitness a lot. He needs to be a bit fitter than his previous fight. But I think I think he can do it. I think he can get the win again. Let me set the scene for you, Leon. King Kenny wins his fight. Dramatically, KO. Yeah. So Pappy wins his fight. Dramatic, yeah. KO as well. Does that set up the fight between King Kenny and Salt Pappy? And if so, who do you favour in that fight? Yes, I think that's a good fight. But I remember, uh, what was it? What mis I can't remember what Misfits event it was. Salt Pappy told Kenny, I'll slap away your jab. That, that jab's useless <laughs> against me. I was not there for that. Yeah, yeah that, that was, that was like, yeah. One of the earlier misfits, he told him I'll really? slap away that jab. And it all depends on what weight they fight at. Yeah, I think I think Salt Pappy might be favorite for that fight. I want to talk about your role in training fighters, particularly Deji. Will he make a comeback to boxing? I know that's kind of been the conversation for so long now is what is his fitness level? Is yeah. he going to be back? Yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back. See, what people fail to realize is Deji, KSI, the Jay Swinglers, these guys are entertainers. They're yeah. not pure fighters. They're entertainers. So you can't take one of their attributes and make them dive into like all of that, that that one attribute of them, which is fighting. They're entertainers. Right now he's enjoying YouTube, he's enjoying life. What do you make of the uh, bet that he has with KSI to get abs <laughs> by the summer? I think it's, what is it, a million pounds? A million, or? a yeah, million. One mil. He still has time to do it. It's not as hard as people think. All it takes is commitment and being mm. disciplined. Get a good nutri nutritionist, make sure you train, uh, make sure your sleep is right. People forget how much how important sleep is and recovery, but he still has enough time to do it. But 
it's going to be harder now. If he started when the bet was first announced, he already have apps. Yeah. So he made it harder for himself. I do want to switch over to Gibb. Bringing him back to the crossover boxing scene has kind of been a topic of interest, specifically against Slim. But what kind of other matchups do you think would get Gibb back into the ring? I don't know, you know. I haven't really thought about Gibb like that. Bars Uncle Son, he's enjoying life. He's traveling, holiday, yeah. St. Lucia. He's just enjoying life at the moment. So I haven't really had him on my mind. But before Kent, before uh, Salt Pappy went on his losing streak, I wanted him to fight Salt Pappy. What's the gain in it? It's just like, I don't know. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. But I don't know what fight's really going to get him out of bed. Yeah. He's going to have to see something like, I don't know, like the scenes, like it's going crazy. It's thriving. It just looks like, I don't know. He's going to he's gonna have to need something to motivate him. If, you know, obviously that matchup with Slim comes about, is there going to be that factor of ring rust? Because Slim's been active. He's been competing. He's been training. Like you said, Gib no, at St. Lucia. But, 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 Gib, but Gib still trains. He still does mm. his s &C. He still boxes. Slim, Slim's not disciplined. He's not professional in his approach to training. He's partying. He's doing this. He's running me on. You know what I'm saying? He's... <laughs> he's not disciplined. He's not cut out for it like that. And I don't think he's got the boxing skill. He, he's tough. He's got a good right hand, but he, he's a bit scary still. I want to switch gears slightly onto a big fight that's been announced. Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. It's finally been announced. It's a fight no one expected. Now I want yeah. Leon Will's opinion and thoughts on this fight. Um, I think Jake Paul is looking to kill or severely damage Uncle Mike. Jake Paul is someone who likes to go, go viral. He'll be happy knocking out Mike Tyson. Like He'll yeah. be so happy putting Mike Tyson in a wheelchair. It's a bit weird because I don't know what his team's his team saying behind the scenes to him. Like, are they happy that he's fighting Mike Tyson? Like, on a real personal note. Mike's old, man. He's old. He's old. He's 58. He's old. He had sciatica the other day. No matter how fit he is for someone who's 58, he's a 58-year-old man. Well, when you speak of the name Jake Paul, another name that always comes up is obviously KSI. Now, we've seen him part ways with the ring for a while now since that fight with Tommy Fury. So where do you think KSI should go from here? It's a tough one. There's a few fights. There's a few fights, interesting fights. Rematch with uh, Fury. I think that fight should happen. I don't think uh, Tommy was strong. So it's like it's not nothing KSI should fear. So I think that fight should happen. Uh, and there's been talks of what Masvidal, Masvidal, McGregor, yeah, Masvidal. Slim. Yeah, Slim. It's just it's just if um, KSI wants to get off his high horse to come down to Slim. Slim, he's just been a bit too beggy. I think. I think if you're a champion, you shouldn't be begging. Yeah. Like I want to fight you. I want to like it's a bit too beggy for me. There ain't no buzz around him. I want to pivot to your involvement in the small council, which I found intriguing. You know, what was your first reaction when they brought that to you and said, "Hey, we'd love to have you in this"? And what are some of the suggestions that you? proposed for misfits during those uh off the record conversations is i think it's a good concept it's always good when um great minds come together but yeah i think i think one of the best decisions was probably the salt pappy and slim fight i yeah. think that's one of the big that's one of the biggest fights so far in in the in the space and it had like the most anticipation and i would like i would like salt pappy to come back and get that rematch there's so many yeah. big rematches that could happen. Kenny should be fighting Ratsu again. I don't know why he hasn't called for that rematch. He should want his get back. It's like, I don't know. It's like people don't really want their get back in this space. On a really general note, what advice would you offer to some of the Misfits kind of people and, and the promotion itself to maintain that status as the premier crossover boxing? You know, because obviously there's no other real competition outside of yeah. MVP and they've got their own thing. But how can we maintain that gold standard at Misfits? When the fans are no longer entertained, that's when the business is going to crumble. The fighters involved need to keep creating content, um, being themselves. Obviously, you want to box and you want to learn new skills, but you still need to focus on the creative aspect of being an influencer or whatever you are. And also, less of these stupid, like, ex-MMA people with, like, 200 views on a YouTube channel. Get them out of it. <laughs> Get them out of it. If you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're not even catching a thousand views on your channels, Get out of here, man. Get out. Get out. There's a Leon Will's blacklist right now, just building with oh, all these names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're that, not even small creators. They're micro, micro creators. Does that sentiment extend to like Chris Avila and Jake Boswick? Because I was a little bit confused about that matchup because I thought, okay, great fighters and they're experienced yeah. in combat sports. Yeah. But when you kind of put it in the context of crossover boxing and influencer boxing, there was no promotion from either guy. And then yeah. obviously on fight night, but, Chris is going, fuck this. <laughs> See, Chris, I, I like Chris. I like I like that stuff. <laughs> I like Nate Diaz. I like their energy. And you know what you're getting with them. They're good space fillers. But then again, when Misfit get into the pro boxing scene, then these people should be welcomed more with open mm. arms. But yeah, they're right. They're right to fill up the card. They put on some good boxing. Do so yeah. you see the pro boxing coming soon for Misfits? You think that that division or that category is going to be opened up fully? Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan. That's in the plan. It's in the works. 
How about Misfits MMA? What do you think about the mixed martial arts side of things coming about? It's a good idea. It's a good idea. It's Obviously, it's not going to be as big as Misfits. And that's what people need to realise. It's not going to be a replacement or as big as the Misfits, the crossover boxing side. But it's good. Why not get Why not get your um, your feet in the water and try and build some people? And in, in terms of a long-term goal, then yeah, it's a good idea. I think the big question that a lot of fans have is, when can we get Leon Wills inside the Misfits boxing ring? <laughs> <laughs> there has to be a motivational reason. It's like, I'll have to go broke <laughs> and I need money. <laughs> I'll have to go broke and need money. Or... Someone has to do something that I want to take. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, there has to be someone killing it, like leaving bodies in the ring. Arms Corleone? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's like me he's... catching a free body. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, on the rule. I have to gain. I have to gain. BL, any last questions for Leon? I think that's all. Leon, you covered everything. Thank you so much for joining this um, news. Um, BL, who's, who's your favorite fighter? Who's your top three fighters? All, in, fight, in all time fighters. In the, No, no, in the scene of Miss Crossover Boxing. Oh, you, 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 answer, you got me on the spot. Answer carefully. Uh, answer so very carefully. One, I've got Ben the Bane Davis. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, all seriousness, though. You're going to hate me for it, but I'm going to throw King Kenny in there. Okay. I like no, I ain't going to hate you. I like a bit of King Kenny. I like a bit of King Kenny. I think he's got good fundamentals. You're missing you're missing my favorite BL. Narij Goyat. <laughs> no. Chase the more, baby. No, nothing gets no, better no, than no, ground no, and pound. No, no. Nothing gets better than throwing your opponent out of the ring. It's WWE when Chase is around. <laughs> oh, uh, there you go. Yeah. Joey Knight. Joey Knight. Joey Knight. Yeah, yeah Joey Knight. Yeah, Joey Knight. Joey Knight. Yeah, yeah, very uh, confident okay. with the answer. Okay, Ben, Ben, who wins, Joey Knight or Dean the Great? Now that's a good question, isn't it, Leon? <laughs> I I have to go with Dean the Great because I think his strength of schedule has been a little bit higher than Joey Knight's been going up against. Joey's fantastic, one of the best guys uh, I think that we've got on the roster in terms of personality. If Joey Knight gets in there with like a We Lead Sharks and does him worse than Dean did, then that might change the answer. But as it stands, I think Dean's fought tougher guys. It's going to be close, but I'd, I'd lean Dean. Leon? Thank you so much for the time, sir. We really appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you in the next small council. We'll probably see you back here on Misfits News. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. All the best. Exciting times ahead with Misfits 14 now officially announced. Let us know down below the fight you are most looking forward to. And make sure you tune in every Tuesday and Thursday for more Misfits News. I'm your host, Ben the Bane Davis. For BL, we'll see you next time.